The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the disciples, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. Everyone who listens to these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, the winds blew and buffeted that house. But it did not collapse because it had been set solidly on rock. Everyone who listens to these words of mine but does not act on them will be like a fool who built his house on sand. The rain fell, the floods came, the winds blew and buffeted that house, and it collapsed and was completely ruined. The Gospel of the Lord. Today is the memorial of St. Ambrose, uh, bishop and doctor of the church. Ambrose was one of the four initial uh, doctors of the Latin church, and really a pretty important figure in the early church. You may recall um, he died on, in uh, 397 on Holy Saturday. An odd, not an odd story, but odd to us because you know I don't know the particulars of the rubrics of the day, but I understand that while he was still a catechumen, I think he was baptized, but why would he have been baptized and then still be a catechumen? He was, by popular acclaim, made the bishop of Milan. He was a wise and intelligent person, classically educated, and um, it was probably because of his wisdom and intelligence, and maybe a relative who already worked for the church, Again, I don't mean that in a particularly negative way, but again, this is like 390, he died in 397, he was born in 340. So he died at what? What is that? 57. Um, I'm more impressed with the fact that, look at the, look at the people God put in his path. Augustine. Jerome. And I think St. Gregory. We're widely aware of, of St. Augustine, not only for his intelligence, his philosophy and theology, much of which is still very prevalent in the theology of the church, but the struggles that Augustine had uh, and his mother Monica, who prayed for years for Augustine's uh, conversion. So Ambrose and Augustine met over long periods of time, and finally Augustine surrendered. Jerome who spent much of his life in a damp cave, also was baptized by um, Ambrose. Jerome, uh, again, was the one that translated the uh, scriptures uh, from Hebrew. Uh, it's called the Vulgate. Uh, but he, tra- he translated that, which eventually came into Latin um, for more commonly in the church today, which, of course, changed uh, prior to Vatican II. Again, notice the wisdom of God. In some ways, it is more difficult for highly intelligent people to believe. Well, why is that? Sometimes when a person is too smart for their own good, it's like, wait a second, this doesn't make sense. How does someone die and then rise from the dead? Now, we know that Augustine had his moral problems uh, etc. And Jerome, I guess, after living in a cold, dark cave, he was kind of persnickety and grouchy and that kind of thing. But he did a great work for the church, even to in our time. Uh, you know, growing up, that um, we're old enough that even in those early years of ourselves, the church still said, no, don't read scripture. You know, you might reinterpret it wrong. Again, thanks to Vatican II, Um, I forget the Latin name for the document on the Word of God. But it really wasn't until the 1960s that the populace, the faithful of the the church, 
we're invited and called actively to read the Word of God, to ponder it, to reflect on it. These are some of the roots of that, so that as we gather and hear the Word of God each day, we try to break it open and understand, uh, in some cases, the obvious meaning, because the obvious is, well, clear to see. But sometimes what's underneath the obvious? The first reading is really talking about the strength of faith. A strong city have we, basically means those who are strong in faith. But the image is that we set up walls and ramparts to protect us. Again, it's a nation that's been conquered by conquering nations. So their images are going to be of war, defense, and protection. But what's strong is their faith. Open the gates and let in a nation that is just, one that keeps faith. They're making it clear that their foundation, their rock, is Christ. Wouldn't it be interesting to know how the gospel was preached in the 3rd century or the 2nd century? In those early centuries, we had not yet come to the division between church and state. Maybe that was part of the reason that Ambrose could legally or canonically have been named a bishop even before he finished uh, his work as a catechumen because there was an active relationship between the church and state. There was important political power that happened through the ways in the life of the church. But the rock is faith. Again, I think only by coincidence do these readings pair or come together today when Jesus talks about the, rock, the solid rock upon, we, upon which we build our house. Again, the obvious is construction. Who would build a house on moving sand or a sand dune? Who would build a house six feet from a river, not imagining that the river might one day flood? Who would build a house without deep foundation? I can still remember St. Germain. God bless Father Jim Beorum, who was the pastor there for over 30 years. He died a month or so ago. Um... The parish has been there a long time, and it's, uh, what would you say, less than a mile from Lake, uh, Lake, Lake St. Clair. And at one point, the gym in the school was sinking. Not just a little bit, it was sinking into the muck underneath the building. The foundation was failing, and they had to spend thousands, if not millions of dollars, to bring it back up to level. More deeply, reflect on the rock of faith. We all experience interior storms, do we not? Illness, wounded relationships, divorce, addiction, the challenges of life, you know, poverty, whatever they are. The inner storms. But if we're sure and secure in Jesus, then we find ourselves having that confidence and faith, even in in distrustful times, that God is with us. Lord, Lord's not really going to make it. You know the phrase, there's no atheist in a foxhole. In other words, when things get difficult, most people pray to someone, to God, maybe even to a God that they do not know. We know the Lord our God, our God who is the truth of love, freely, willingly, and humbly given to us in the Lord Jesus. As we pray then today, Let's be mindful that God has a particular will and a particular intention. I think it was God's will, God's way, that Ambrose came came along at the time of Augustine and Jerome. We're talking about some intellectual giants there, way over my head. But God used those who finally, through whom they finally, finally found conversion. Only those who do the will of God, the Father, will come to heaven. What's the will of God? To believe in Jesus and to act on that faith. Can't just say the words. If you talk the talk, you got to walk the walk. Ambrose did that. For however he got to be the bishop of Milan, uh, he defended heresies, particularly the Arian heresy. He loved people. He was pastoral. He was kind and he was merciful. May God continue to raise up, as was said in the opening prayer today, more men and women of faith to lead us, priests, deacons, men and women religious, and the faithful throughout the church, that the word of God might be widely heard, received, and acted on.
May God be praised by our worship this day. May we be blessed not only by Jesus, but by Ambrose, whom he richly used. <laughs>